Well, last month, South Africa's position in the Global Competitiveness Report Index dropped following the decline in the strength of auditing and reporting standards. And recent scandals involving auditing firms McKinsey, well, well uh, consulting firm McKinsey, auditing firm KPMG, um, have sparked a broader debate around the lack of transparency in the country's financial services sector. Let's now discuss that with SASI Chief Executive Officer Anthony Governor. Anthony, thanks so much for your time today. These days, it seems there's, um, you know, one day another scandal and all of it really involving massive organizations that people place a lot of trust in. Financial services is really about trust. What is going on? Siki, uh, sadly, I believe that uh, the trust bank has been broken in South Africa. And I say this uh, just, you know, if I look at the, the, the most recent scandals with um, KPMG, this is not a new issue to the yeah. country. We had this 10 years ago uh, with the Fidencia scandal, we, um, you know, which in my opinion uh, is criminal. Yeah. Um, we had the, exactly the same issue with Alexander Forbes, and we have a repeat of it with KPMG. I think the problem in South Africa is that we have grown a tolerance, uh, a tolerance to corrupt practices in the country. Uh, and I think the South African um, consumer needs to have a zero tolerance approach to corruption in the country. Uh, you know, to s simply sit and watch companies take money. Yeah. Uh, the, Fidencia, the Fidencia issue left 47,000 widows yes. and orphans. And orphans. Mm. Um, certainly, as South Africans, we've got to do more. What do we do? Uh, one of the major criticisms at this point is that we focus quite a lot on public sector corruption, and rightfully so, because that is obviously public money. But this is public money as well, as you've pointed out, widows and orphans having their money stolen by um, individuals who then get away with it and will get, get away with it. What is the thing that we need to, to go back to as a society? The financial services environment has been... Um, you know, sparked by the issue of radical economic transformation. Uh, and I think you know, some of our MPs have spoken to this, uh, our former finance minister has spoken to this issue, but let's talk about what radical economic transformation actually means for the country. It talks to financial inclusivity. And it's about business in South Africa creating a system that is more inclusive for the disenfranchised or the previously disenfranchised. Yeah. We are hosting a discussion on the 12th of October with the business community of South Africa to deal with this particular issue. Uh, we're not hosting it in the Santon or Rosebank. We're yeah. hosting it at the establishment in Alex Mall uh, in Alexander. And the reason why we are talking to this issue is because there's a Gini coefficient in the country that has to be talked to. Okay. How would um, financial inclusion deal with some of this malfeasance? It's what we define as legacy planning in the country. Yeah. If you're not allowing the very population that is dependent on social grants, that is dependent on state pensions to come into an environment where they can actually create legacy planning through the insurance market. I don't believe that the insurance market is actually doing enough in product innovation and distribution to that population segment. Okay. And also, I suppose a more informed populace would then be able to pick up on some of the corrupt activities. That Absolutely. So, I mean, you talk about uh, an informed population is what we talk to is financial literacy yeah. um, and advocating financial literacy in South Africa. For every one literate South African we have, we have a financially illiterate South African. And that's a disaster statistic yeah. to have in a country like ours, yeah. especially with the financial services system being as mature as it is. All right. We'll be watching for um, that talk you'll be having on the 12th. Thanks for your time. Chief Executive Officer at ASI, that's Anthony Governor.